We're starting this episode on a journey to somewhere that isn't my base. Or indeed any project that I'm currently working on. There's a joke that I've been meaning to do since the beginning of season 7. And there it is. This is where we're heading. Etho's base. And basically, all I wanted to do is a joke that I'm sure he's never heard before. I'm 100% certain this is a joke that he's never seen. Guess what that is? That's a slab. Now, now it's an etho slab. <laughs> I don't even know if he's gonna get this. I'm so childish. Then I started taking a look around here and I've come to realize how peculiar. Whoa, that's an anime beat ups. <laughs> you don't see that every day, do you? I feel like I'm giving, I'm now just straight up giving a tour of Etho's base. We gotta do this properly, hermit crib style. Etho's base is a modern 2020 masterpiece of madness. He's got everything. He's got the honeycombs, and he's got whatever those things are. The interior comes packed with plenty of storage, including all of his clocks and herbs. Somehow, Etho manages to bring the outside on the inside. Only the, the slickest hermits have a llama going around their base. And he remains the only hermit to have somehow made a house made completely of interiors. How is this possible? This base confuses me! But it wouldn't be an episode of Hermit Cribs without talking about the productivity of the base. Etho is no stranger to redstone, and by looking at all of this armpit smell, you always find something new in Etho's base. He's got easy dispensing dyes. That's not dyes. He's got bubble elevators that lead to the outside. And of course, a place for his infinite musical prowess. I feel like this could be a B-side show. Hermit Cribs, just Green turns up and has a look at what your base is doing and just gives it a score. I mean, this is the most confusing yet intriguing base I've ever encountered. I think, I think we've got to give this a rating. There's both a massive attention to detail, as he's got little cubby holes where you can just sit and have a relax. And then he's got functionality. The color palette is actually really pleasing. But somehow, and I don't really understand how, he's built inside first. And then when you just, when you hit the outside, that's it. The building just stops. It just ends. Grian's Hermit Crib, final result. Nine out of 10, a beautiful mess. Whose base should we review next? That kind of just came out of nowhere. I feel like we could do that more often. Green's Hermit Cribs, where we just go and have a look at other people's bases and just, just rate it out of 10. I really like Etho's base, even though it's the most unconventional thing I've ever seen on the Hermitcraft server. Whose base should we go and rate next? And at some point, we could even critique our own base and give this a score out of 10. But we need to get on with our episode. Now, I have been planning quite a lot. I've got shulker boxes full of the materials for the next part of the build. But I also said that I wanted to use the rest of this TNT to gather more netherite and truly take the crown of the netherite king. Back to the upside down we go. Whoa! Someone blew up my diagonal tunnel! And what's this? down the tunnel makes it look like you're falling falling all the way to the upside down now i haven't been here in a while so i don't know if anyone has taken me up on my offer to live in the upside down we invited three people we invited mumbo b dubs and scar and we're still alone friends can be hard to come by sometimes i sent out birthday invites to all of my friends and no one showed up well, I'm sure someone will turn up eventually, so let's just continue. Right, we want to go and find a fresh place to dig underground, lava free, and get ourselves more netherite. So let's start here and see where we get to. As most people know, netherite occurs the most at Y15. Now, I have been digging a bit lower than Y15 because I'm terrified of blowing up the ceiling and having the lava pour down on me. But this time I'm going to try placing the TNT- uh, yeah, like that. I'm gonna try placing the TNT 
a little bit higher and seeing if I get more results or if I just release all of the lava. Oh my goodness, this is just, just a bit here. Let's do a very quick test and see if the results are any better. Be gone, nether. Yeah, quite a lot of lava. So far, so good, actually. I think that was a total of five veins of ancient debris, but a lot of them only had one in. So that's pretty good going. Now, I think what we need to do is go full time lapse mode and get rid of as much nether as possible using the TNT method. Let's go. I think I found the scariest Minecraft head after all that. I, I acquired one of these and I just, the more you look into their eyes, the more sort of creepy it gets until I found this one. Oh, it's so much worse. Look into these eyes. I think this is the creepiest Minecraft head I've ever seen. However, I did find one, two, three, four stacks of ancient debris, plus seven, and then I've got a little bit left over. We need to get this. I don't know if I want to turn all of it into scrap and then ingots. I might keep a little bit of ancient debris as debris and maybe sell some, but let's get most of this smelting up and transformed into something useful. It's a bit like watching paint dry, actually. It's taking a while. There we go, all the netherite scrap. Now, how much do we get out of this? Only 59 ingots. And that is six blocks of netherite. The most expensive item in the game. I spent several hours and I've got six of them. I could get more by smelting this up. I think we've got to commit now. In order to call myself the netherite king, I at least need enough for a throne. I may have to cheat a little bit by adding some ancient debris as the back. Boom. The netherite throne. It's not quite as spectacular as the diamond throne, but it's still got some sort of sense of power. I think it's just because these are so rare. A little bit lackluster, isn't it? But check it out. Gre Whoa! <laughs> I forgot I was wearing this. Check it out. I am with all of my tools and armor, the netherite king. I did lose, unfortunately, some netherite along the way. I don't really know how. I'll probably find it at some point, but I, I'm probably missing at least a stack, maybe more. Just because I had to do so many trips with TNT and such. But check it out. We are the netherite king. For all of your netherite needs, you come to me. So what are we going to do with all of this netherite? Well, I was thinking what we could do is resurrect the Did You Die box. But instead of calling it the Did You Die box, I think we should just call it the backup box. 
I think it's got a nice ring to it, and we'll sell the backup boxes at the barge. I'll probably only make a couple to begin with, and then from there, we'll see We'll see if we sell a couple. They're going to be very, very expensive. I'm going to quickly redesign this so that I can constantly have the netherite thrown. I'd, I won't use all of my netherite because this is going to go in the main base. So the netherite throne will look like this. Boom. Slightly less powerful, but these are expensive. Each block represents a couple of hours. XIZ Huma Void is actually se not selling. He's just throwing away stuff. And he's giving me coordinates to go meet him because he's just throwing away stacks and stacks of stuff. And I'm like, no, I'll take that. Yeah, we'll take a couple of shulker boxes with us. We'll take the netherite throne with us as well. Okay, the netherite throne is definitely not something you can take around very quickly. This 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 stuff is uh, painful to mine. If I press tab, you can see my score going up. So even though it says I got 500, it's not particularly accurate because as you can see, it's going up and this isn't uh, this isn't naturally generated netherite. This is obviously what I've got in place. So those numbers are not particularly accurate, especially if you built anything with netherite. So don't take those numbers too seriously. What you really got to look out for is how many blocks of netherite have they got. So if we fly this direction for a little bit, we should come across some free goodies. Oh, there he is. Lots of leather and pork chops. I'm here to take your stuff. Look at all this leather. I'm, de I'm gonna sell this as item frames in the barge. I have not been able to stock it for a while. There is, there's so much. I don't, I don't think I need this much leather. This is insane. Okay, maybe, I don't even think I need this much leather to be fair, but you know, free stuff, why throw it out? Well, that was a pretty good deal. Now let's head back to the base and make our first backup box. Whoa, Scar has been Busy. He's a little bit late to the nether game, but look at that. What a magnificent looking build. I think the perfect place for the netherite throne is right here. I think we need a glowing pedestal so that it's raised off the ground. Boom. The netherite throne. Oh, that looks so epic. I mean, it's a tiny chair, but it's a powerful chair. It's a very expensive chair. So we have 27 ingots of netherite to play with which will get us pretty far when it comes to making our backup boxes to sell on the barge so this is really easy for the most part i just basically trade up some emeralds easy peasy trade up the emeralds then i buy one piece of each armor the enchantments don't matter particularly one of each tool unenchant all of them so i'm left with the components then go back and upgrade them. Although I don't think a chest plate is particularly needed. No one wears chest plates, so that might be just a waste of netherite. So we'll do the legs, the feet, and the helmet. And then of course the tools, place them all in a box. And then we put in everything else that you will require if you happen to somehow lose all your netherite gear. I have a feeling people will like this just to have a spare backup because if you die, you obviously come back to your base without anything and then you've got to go and find all your stuff and often if you died it's probably because something got you probably one of these and they hit hard so having a spare set of armor is one of those things that takes a lot of effort but is only needed occasionally i don't have any toolsmiths here at all so a sword might have to be left out of this maybe this is a uh, Backup box mark one. We'll see if this sells. If it doesn't, then we'll start enchanting the stuff up and adding the swords and everything else. But for now, I think that's pretty good. You got your wings, you got your carrots, you got all the tools, and you got the armor. So now the question is, what do we sell them for? Oh, well, let me just do some quick thinking on this. Each ingot is for ancient debris. Now, ancient debris is very hard to come by. We're looking at, I think we're looking at a cool 200 diamonds for one of these. 200 diamonds, maybe even more. Maybe I've just undersold this completely. Oh, I keep meaning to do work here. I need to finish this. <laughs> what is, what is this shop? It looks, it looks like a cinnamon roll. 
a boxed cinnamon roll? It, actually, no, it might be ancient debris. Oh, wait, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it totally sells ancient debris. One diamond block per cin- Oh, <laughs> it's actually calling them cinnamon buns. Press button for more cinnamon buns. One diamond block? For one ancient nether debris? Oh, wow. Okay, so maybe I did completely undersell. With this in mind, you'd have to mine one, two, three, four to get a single ingot. So that is... He almost doubles my price. Okay, based on my new price, it's going to be 220 diamonds for this. This is unenchanted. So this is the, the prototype backup box. And I could even sell these... Whoa! Blimey. Do you mind? I could even sell these individually for a little bit more to encourage people to buy the backup box. All right, we need to put this on a bit of a pedestal because this is an important box. We want to draw some attention to it. 220 diamonds. That is a deal. Oh my god. Oh, I thought the shulker box was going to stay there for a second. It looks mighty impressive. Haven't actually checked the barge in a while. See if we've got any profits. Oh, it's happened. It's happened. We finally sold some dirt. We finally sold some dirt. You have no idea how happy that makes me. We just sold literal dirt. I don't think I don't think you'd realize how big of a deal that is. We have made so many sales. I need to restock. I really need to restock. Another cool 36 diamonds to the ever-growing pile of diamonds in the chest. Actually, let's turn these into blocks. 54 diamond blocks. That is a lot. So, we just need someone to buy this, and if they don't, we'll have to consider adding even more stuff in here, and then probably upping the price even more. Tell all your friends, the backup box is back in business. The, the back puns are gonna be big for this one. Back-to-back -back sales. The boxes. They're back. <laughs> I think I'll be back to restock this in another episode, because it's, uh, it's, it's quite the task, doing all this. And I also want to add some more stock. I'll come up with some other things that I can do. Come on, someone buy the backup box. Actually, the new stock is very simple. We're just going to fill up, because we are the netherite king now, we are going to fill up on all netherite tools for the barge. All unenchanted, but mainly because I don't want to uh, steal business from looky looky at my bookie from Coralis. So, we just do the same thing with all of these tools and a little bit spare. One of these is going to set you back 32 diamonds. Boom. We may expand this, but this is a very, very expensive line of items. I think we have a potential customer. Let's watch. Le let's, let's watch your average customer in the wild. Here we see the wild Iskal checking out the bargains in the barge. Displeased, he moves around. The prices are obviously not right. Perhaps he'll be back another time. Mumba was like, hey Iskal, just stealing some slime. He's like, there's a shop, but okay. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, do we need to, do we need to tell him when we take stuff? I've also just realized I'm now out of netherite. So this entire episode was spent getting the netherite throne and then running out. I think all that has led to me running out of time due to the, the lengthy process it takes to find all of this ancient debris. So for now, I'm gonna have to say thank you very much for watching and good bye. But not really goodbye because I just wanted to have a quick word with everybody and say that you may have noticed that my videos have been a little bit further apart than usual. I'm normally, you know, only three or four days apart between each episode. However, recently it's been more like a week, maybe even a few days more than that. And that's pretty simply because I'm just really swamped at the moment in real life. I've got a lot going on, a lot of stresses, and I'm trying to do a lot to keep myself going. And I'm finding it incredibly difficult to get on Hermitcraft and get on Minecraft and make my other videos. I've got loads of stuff in the pipeline. I'm just not 
getting enough time into them. This episode itself was even a minute shorter than it should have been, hence why we're having this conversation right now. So I just wanted to thank everybody for their patience and not bugging me about it, because I really am doing my best and trying to get out as many videos as possible. So I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to every single one of you, and goodbye for real this time.